let's just say a little bit about the chi-square distribution for large n. If you consider the chart in the back of the book, you see that there's only like small n values listed. And so you might ask, well, what if you have um, 100 samples or 40 samples or something like that, n equals 40 or n equals 100, um, and you want to use the chi-square distribution? Why, you know, you can't really look it up in the back of the book. Why is that? Um, well, of course, there's only a limited amount they can put in there, but um, beyond that, as n gets large, the chi-square distribution becomes closer to a normal distribution. I mean, if you think about it, it's clear why this has to happen just by the central limit theorem. Remember, um, how did we get the chi-square distribution in the first place? We imagined that you had um, z1, z2 up to, um, let's say, zk, let's just say. These are um, a bunch of um, uh, of identical, independent, um, uh, standard, uh, normal variables. And then what we do is we look at um, the sum of the squares of these normal variables. And well, and that's the definition of um, of the um, so all this is the definition of the chi-square variable with k degrees of freedom. But then you can see that if uh, if k gets big, then well, if you have any random variable, if x is any random variable, and let's say x x one through x k of the same distribution as x, and they're all and they're all independent. Then if I look at these, um, these sums of these xi's, y equals 1 to k, and k goes to infinity, then this thing becomes normally distributed yeah, after you normalize at each, at each stage, right? So you get a sum of, of identical random variables, um, these things being a sum of z squared, where z is the standard normal variable, you're going to get something that's going to look normal eventually. But what is eventually? we can get a little bit of a feeling for eventually by just looking at some graphs. So let's take a look together. Uh, let's see. Okay, so asking um, Mr. Wolfram, um, we see that here's a graph of the chi-score with nine degrees of freedom. Um, and you see it looks, well, it's kind of bell-like, but it's pretty skew. It, it's not, it's not so regular looking so we're like okay nine that's still pretty small let's do uh 20 20 degrees of freedom um this is gonna look a lot more bell-like right yeah it's a lot more bell-like not super great though at the same time you know you might imagine that you're you know if you're trying to figure out where these values are where the tips of the bell lay off on the edge, then you're, it's gonna be pretty rough, right? Um, your estimate's not gonna be that great. Let's look at 30. Okay, so 30, okay, we're looking definitely some more, some more bell-like and all that. But you can see, you know, there's still, there's still stuff going on on the edges. How far do we have to go? Let's go to uh, 50. Pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good, you know? So you can see that it really depends. I mean, the problem is like, you know, what, what are we doing? We're taking a normal, sorry, we're taking some random variable and adding a bunch of identical copies of it to itself. And what is that initial thing that we're looking at? It's the chi-square with one degree of freedom. And it looks pretty not normal, right? That's that's pretty skew, pretty pretty crazy, pretty not normal. Um, so how far do you have to go out? You have to go out pretty far to get this thing to look like a normal random variable. So, you know, really, how far do you go? It depends on what you're trying to do. You know, if you're if you're trying to be like super accurate with those with those tails, then it doesn't really make sense to settle for n equals thirty and maybe not even for 50 to go to a normal distribution. 
So let's take a quick peek though on, even though we can see that this normal approximation is so-so, you know, let's just make the normal approximation and see how to use it real quick, right? So um, let's suppose we were trying to find some confidence interval for our chi-square random variable. So let's suppose we're trying to figure out about, um, you know, n minus one s squared over sigma squared. And we want to approximate this by some x, which is normal. Well, to do that, we would need to know what the, um, what the mean and the variance are. So this thing is a, a chi-square variable with uh, n minus one degrees of freedom. And um, let's see, right, okay. So, um, so we can, so the chi-square is a particular form of the gamma distribution. And we've kind of figured out these, um, these kind of basic properties before, but let's just um, remember, so the mean um, of, of a chi-square random variable is going to be the number of degrees of freedom. It's gonna be n minus one in this case. And the variance um, is going to be twice that. So let's get to know this normal variable that's approximating our chi-square. Since we know the mean and variance, we can relate this uh, normal random variable to the standard one by just uh, translating it over by the mean and then dividing by the standard deviation. Um, now, you know, in our particular case, that just looks like x over root 2 n minus 1 minus, uh, and I'll cancel one of these root n's, and I'll have a root n minus 1 over root 2. Okay, so that's, um, that's this guy that we're looking at. Now, of course, x is n minus 1 um, s squared over sigma squared. So this is also, so this is the standard normal random variable. And this is also equal to... Um, n minus 1 s squared over um, sigma squared, that's my x, and I'm still um, dividing out by root 2 n minus 1, and then I am subtracting root n minus 1 over root 2. Let me uh, cancel off one of those root n minus 1s. I'm left with a root n minus 1 in the top, s squared. I have a root 2 in the bottom, uh, sigma squared minus root n minus 1 over root 2. I can pull those out. Root, it's really the root of uh, n minus 1 over 2 uh, times um, s squared over sigma squared minus 1. Okay, so the point is that this um, is, of course, this is an approximation. So let's see which one was an equal and which one was an approximation. Um, X is a normal variable and it's approximately um, given by um, this particular combination of uh, S squared and sigma, which is our chi square. Okay. Um, so this is our approximation for um, uh, for the chi, you know, for this is what we get from approximating our chi-square with a normal random variable after we kind of uh, reshuffle things. Okay, so for example, um, we know that with 95% certainty, certain the Lee, certainty, um, that um, z is between minus 2 and 2. And so in the case that we were considering, let's pretend we take, um, excuse me, 100 uh, samples and we get, a, um, we get a sample variance of eight. I think that's what we said before. And then we're wondering, what do we know about our actual um, you know, variance? And what can, we, what can we guess? Well, we know that this particular combination here is a, approximately a normal variable. And so we know that minus two is approximately root um, n minus 1 over 2, um, s squared over sigma squared minus 1. Um, whoops, excuse me, approximately. We're just going to use that as a substitution, and we're going to say that this thing is uh, between minus 2 and 2 with 95% certainty. Excuse me. Okay, now um, n minus 1 is 99 divided by 2 is like, um, 
you know, 98 and a half, um, whoops, sorry, like 49 and a half, I think, yeah, 49 and a half, yeah, pretty close to 49, and you take a square root of that, and you get pretty close to 7. So this thing is pretty close to 7 with uh, when n is 100. Okay, and s squared, of course, is 8. So what do we get? We got minus 2, less than or equal to um, 7, um, 8 over sigma squared, um, minus 1, less than or equal to 2. We want to get uh, some sort of a bound for sigma squared of that. Let's divide both sides by 7, minus 2, 7, so less than or equal to 8 over sigma squared minus 1, less than or equal to uh, 2 divided by 7. Uh, let's add 1. We got uh, 1 minus 2 sevenths, less than or equal to 8 over sigma squared, less than or equal to uh, 1 plus 2 sevenths. So, of course, this thing is 5 sevenths, and this thing is um, 9 sevenths. Um, and so we got uh, 5 sevenths, less than or equal to 8 over sigma squared, less than or equal to uh, 9 sevenths. Um, now we can what, divide by 8 and reciprocate. <laughs> um, and uh, when we take reciprocals, we'll change the directions of these uh, inequalities. And so let's see. So I'll divide by 8, I get 5 divided by 7 times 8 is 56, um, less than or equal to 1 over sigma squared, less than or equal to uh, 9 divided by um, 7 times, wait, Yes, uh, 7 times 8 is 56 again. Okay, yeah, excuse me. All right, okay. Now, uh, so 56 over 5 less than or equal to sigma squared less than or equal to, oh, greater than or equal to. So flip these inequalities when I'm taking reciprocals. Uh, 56 over 9. Okay, cool. Um, and now, what do we got? 56 over 5, so that's like, um, you know, 11.2, uh, greater than or equal to sigma squared, greater than or equal to uh, 56 over 9, um, let's see, so 54 over 6, so that's like um, 6 uh, and, uh, and 2 nines. I don't know, what is that, like point um, two three. Something? I don't know. Um, anyways, so uh, sigma squared is within these two bounds. Um, our measure value is 8, and with 95% certainty, we know that it's here. So that so this is a 95% confidence interval for sigma squared. Um, remember the guess that we had made, or the uh, sample, the sample, not the guess, the sample variance that we'd gotten was 8. And we can say with 95% certainty we're actually within, um, within these bounds.